Hi, my name is Mike McGacka. And I'm Jenny Sum. And our presentation is on natural language processing using finite, st finite state transducers for morphological parsing. And that might sound a little complicated because it kind of is, but we'll get to that in a second. First, let's start by defining what is a natural language. A natural language is formally defined as any language that arises unpremeditated in the brains of human beings. Essentially, most languages that you've ever spoken slash heard of fall in this category. But in case you're a little confused, here are some examples in order of decreasing formality. British English, African American Vernacular English, Leet Speak. All of these are natural languages. Note that regulating a language does not diminish its natural status. Another important way of defining what a natural language is, is to contrast it against constructed languages. All computer languages and formal languages such as C and regex are constructed. There are also several spoken constructed languages, such as Esperanto, a language designed to be easy to pronounce and globally adopted, and Klingon, which is designed to be imperial, aggressive, and survive the harsh vacuum of space. Now to define what is natural language processing. And natural language processing is a little less succinctly defined due to it being a vastly multidisciplinary field. But a common interpretation of it is any work in computer science, artificial intelligence, or computational linguistics that deals with natural languages. Or a bit more simply, dealing with meaningful interactions between computer software and human languages. Note that yelling at your code when it's segfaulting is not an example of NLP. But some examples of NLP in your life are Google Translate. Google Translate uses machine translation algorithms, which are based on statistical resolution to gain meaning from your text. And they perform these statistical resolution algorithms on source material like UN documents, which are translated into multiple different languages at a time. This happens every time you use Google Translate to do your foreign language homework. Siri is another good example of natural language processing in your life. Siri uses speech-to-text and text-to-speech algorithms to take vocal commands and output the results of her operation slash answer to your query in plain English. Pretty cool. And Watson the Jeopardy bot is capable of analyzing Jeopardy clues and using several hundred language processing algorithms in parallel, form an answer based off of 15 terabytes of knowledge that's just stored in a database somewhere, and can generally do this fast when you pick your notes. All right, so now we're going to tie it all into CS301. What are finite state transducers? Finite state transducers are state machines with two tapes. These two tapes are an input tape and an output tape. Unlike the finite state automatons that we're used to in class, which only have one tape. So here we have an example on the right. We go from state 0. In the input tape, we read A. And then on the output tape, we write B. Then we go to state 1, which goes to state 3, the final state, where we read in H and then output H on the output tape. Same thing down here, reads A, outputs C, reads E, outputs E, and goes to the final state. So what is morphology? Morphology is the study of ways words are built from small units called morphemes. Morphemes are made up of two things. Uh, the stem, which is the core word, and then affixes, which either change the meaning of the word or changes the grammatical functions of the word. So here we have an example of the word unhappiness. The three morphemes are un, happy, and nis. Happy is the stem word, and then the prefix is un, and the suffix is nis. Un and nis are both affixes. So what is morphological parsing? Morphological parsing is a process of determining these morphemes. So here in our first example, the input is cats, and then after morphological parsing, we have cat, plus n, which states that it's a noun, and then plus pl, which states that it's plural. And then we can look underneath cat here. We have cat, plus n, which says it's a noun, and then plus sg, which says it's singular. So let's take a closer look onto those two tapes. We have the lexical and the surface. In the lexical, we have C-A-T plus N plus P-L. And then surface is C-A-T-S, cats. And either one can be in input tapes, and either one can also be output tapes. So here's an example of the regular noun transition. 
we have C in the input, output C, input A, output A, input T, output T, input plus N, and then it outputs an empty, and then plus PL outputs S. And so the output string is cats altogether. And this is coming from the lexical interpretation to the surface interpretation. And here we have the simplified morphological parsing FST. So the cats example actually goes into this regular noun here. Goes to Q1, then plus N, which outputs an empty. Goes to Q4. If it's singular, there's a pound symbol in the input, uh, the input string, which goes to the final state. Um, if there's a plus PL, that means it's plural, so it outputs an S, and then here we have a pound, uh, which is the end of tape. And then irregular singular, uh, singular nouns, so an example of that would be ox, goes through here. And then irregular plural nouns, uh, an example would be oxen, would go through here. So why do we use FSTs and not FSAs? So generally, generally, we use FSAs to define a set of strings, but FST determines the relationship between these set of strings. And uh, natural language processing, uh, it's, it's very important to use, to use this. So FST as a recognizer, it takes a pair of strings as input and outputs and accepts it if the string pair is in the string pair language. Otherwise, it rejects it. FST as a generator, outputs pairs of strings of the language and also outputs yes or no. FST as a set relator computes relation between, the, between these sets. And FST as a translator reads a string in and outputs another string. Morphological parsing is an example of a translator because it inputs a string of letters and then outputs a string of morphemes. So now, do we have any questions? Of course we don't have any questions. This is a presentation video. Hey guys, hope you had a good time listening to this. Rate high if you want. Rate low if you don't. You suck if you rate us low. Not really, but have a great day. <laughs> By right. the way, look at some of our sources. See ya. All right, see you guys. Thanks.